Hello and welcome to the third of our 10 video series on how to play Heroes of Might and Magic 3 the board game. In this video we'll teach you the overview and round sequence. Check out the playlist for a full list of videos. And hi everyone, it's Stella. And Tarrant here from Meeple University. Alright, let's go to the classroom. In Heroes of Might and Magic 3, you are a hero, leading a faction as you explore the lands of Antigaric. As you explore, you'll discover new tiles, discover new resources, level up your hero, and fight combats against enemies, both neutral ones that are set by the game, and the units and heroes of your opposing players. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is a scenario based game, and each scenario will have its own map and its own victory conditions. There are four different types of scenario. In a clash, all players are fighting against each other to be the one who meets the victory condition. The campaign is a solo mode, you'll play interconnected scenarios against an AI controlled by the game. An alliance scenario is a 2 vs 2 team mode, and in a co-op scenario, all players fight for the same goal. In this video, we're showing you Brave New World, a two or three player clash scenario. And here, it's the first player who can find and flag five mines, or whoever's flagged the most mines after nine rounds, who will be the winner. The game is played in rounds, tracked on the round tracker. Odd numbered rounds are called resource rounds, and at the start of each of these, with the exception of round one, all players gain resources equal to their positions on the income tracks. Even numbered rounds are astrologers rounds, and at the start of each of these, draw an astrologers proclaim card and resolve it for all players. This will be a small positive or negative effect which will impact play. Next, check to see whether there are any timed effects associated with this round and resolve them now. After these initial steps, players resolve actions. There are three different types of actions, and these dictate when and how you're able to take each. There are movement actions. These involve moving, discovering new tiles, resolving locations, and combat. There are town actions. Tracked by these tokens, these represent constructing and using the buildings in your town. And there are morale actions, which are small actions where you can use a morale token to manage your deck or re-roll dice. So knowing that these three types of actions exist, this is how the sequence of a round works out. Each player has a single turn, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. To begin your turn, you may discard any number of cards from your hand to your discard pile, and then draw from the top of your deck up to your current hand limit. Your hero's hand limit is set by its level, so it begins the game at 4 and can increase to as high as 7. If you begin this phase above your hand limit, then you must at least discard down to that hand limit. Then, during your turn, and only during your turn, you'll spend movement points to take movement actions. Once you've taken all movement actions, or as many as you wish to take, play will pass to the next player who deals with their cards. Meanwhile, at any point during the round, except for during a combat, you have access to take your three town actions. That means you can do these on your turn or on another player's turn. Your three town actions are Build, Population, and Spells, and you may take each of them once per round. If you're familiar with the video game, do note that your hero does not need to be in your town to take town actions. Finally, a player who has a morale token may spend it at any time during a round, including during combat, to take a morale action. In this way, you've got the ability to reduce some downtime, taking your town actions while someone else is taking movement actions, and also an even chance to use town actions to prepare for a battle against a player earlier in turn order. Once all players have finished taking turns, 
check the victory conditions to see whether anyone has won. If not, proceed to the start of the next round. And that's the overview and round sequence for Heroes of Might and Magic 3 the board game. In our next chapter, we'll talk about town and morale actions. Thanks so much for watching. See you there.